So I, I defined a system so far that it didn't say anything what it does. I just say that it's a pair, uh, initial machine and a control function. We'll see in a minute what it does, what's the computation. Uh, and, uh, and first I want to define what it means an instance of, uh, of, of a machine. So a machine is like code. An instance, uh, think of it as, uh, as actual running code. So, so there's the actual code, static code, and then the actual process that actually runs. It has data in, in execution. So, so this is going to be an instance of, 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 uh, of, 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 of an interactive machine. It, uh, so right now I'm calling it uh, uh, just a pair, which is the machine and the ID. And remember the ID is just the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the program and some string, which is the identity. Okay? Uh, so this is what now, right now I'm calling uh, uh, an instance of the machine. And there are going to be many instances of each machine in the system, or it could be. Um, and I want to distinguish. And uh, a, a configuration of, uh, of a machine, of an instance, is as usual configuration. We think of con con configuration of, of, of uh, some computing device. It's the contents, the entire contents of the tape and the control, and whatever information you need in order to just restart the computation from where you are right now. Okay? Um, so, so, so I want to talk, uh, so this is something else. It's kind of uh, uh, natural things. And then an execution uh, of, of, uh, of such a system is a, is a sequence of configurations. Okay? So as usual, there's an execution of uh, some computing device. Um, and, and in each configuration, there is a single machine that is active. That means that its active bit is one, and all the other ones' active bits are zero, right? And this is the one that's actually doing the computation. Um, and the initially, uh, uh, the, uh, the initial uh, machine I uh, uh, is uh, uh, the initial configuration of the initial machine is the initial configura the configuration of the whole thing. And then the initial machine is active; it's running. Uh, and then the active machine runs until, until it performs some external write. So, uh, uh, so what does it mean to perform external write? Uh, we'll see in a minute. But anyway, at this point, the activation of that machine is suspended. It's no longer active. It gets some hold state. And then, uh, uh, and then something happens. And then you take the, um, whatever uh, uh, information this machine wrote to its outgoing message tape, and you interpret it in some way. We'll see in a minute how. Uh, and then uh, hopefully this will result in writing the, the content of this thing on the, one of the incoming tapes of another machine. And then that other machine starts running. OK? And then you repeat. That other machine runs, et cetera, et cetera. And then they just run uh, uh, um, one after the other in this way, completely sequential, serial way, unfair, just, uh, just one after the other. Uh, and then the execution ends when the initial machine halts, you know, gets to the stopping state, and the output of the execution, the output of the initial machine. Okay, that's uh, uh, that's it. Okay. So the one thing I didn't say is uh, how what is this uh, extended write uh, uh, operation? Um, as so so, uh, so so here's what's going on. So the information on this outgoing message tape. Uh, is going to be the following. So I'm going to write, so if I want something to happen, I'm, the, I'm a machine, I'm going to need, uh, so first I'm writing the, uh, the, uh, the mu, the, the, uh, the ID of, um, of the sending machine and also the code of the sending machine. And then I'm writing uh, uh, u prime, which is identity and program uh, of, uh, of, some, of the target machine, the one that I want to write to. Uh, and then I'm writing a tape name out of those three tapes, either the input incoming message or subroutine output. Um, and then I'm, uh, there's another bit, which is a reveal bit. We'll see the means what it is, and then the message. <coughs> and then what's the effect of this thing? OK. So uh, first, I'm going to uh, the, this control function that I said before is going to check that I'm allowed to do this operation. So in general, it's just going to apply the execution prefix to know if I'm allowed, and then it says allow this allow. If it's not allowed, uh, uh, then uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the controls goes to the initial machine, and, uh, and that's it. Um, and, and don't message delivered. So this is a way to control. We'll see in a minute how, how this control is uh, useful. It's actually very useful to define models. Okay? Uh, but if it's allowed, 
then, uh, um, then okay, then the following thing. If there is no, I, I'm trying to write to a machine, M prime, ID prime. Uh, if there is no such uh, uh, um, machine instance in the system currently, which is going to be probably the case in the beginning, then uh, uh, such a machine is added to the uh, instance is added to the, to the model to actually generate a new machine with the code uh, uh, that I asked for and the identity that I set. The new machine is added to the model and then it's initialized to some empty state and then the first thing that happens is you get the message and then uh, uh, it starts running on this message. Okay? Um, so if the machine is already there, uh, then, uh, uh, and then, well, th there's a caveat, right? So I can, so we'll see the minute this caveat, it's a small detail. But if the machine is already there, um, then um, two things can happen. Either uh, the code of that machine that I'm trying to write to agrees with the code that I wrote there, okay? Or, uh, uh, or it doesn't, okay? If it agrees, then it's written uh, uh, um, and, and, and everything as I said before. If it doesn't, I'm trying to write to a machine and I specify a code. And uh, I, I, well, if, if I try to write a machine and I don't specify any code, just my code thing is just a bottom or, or something, then never mind, I'm going to write to whatever machine. If I'm trying to actually specify a code, I want to write a machine with that particular code and the machine with that ID has a different code, then there's an error. I learned that I'm trying to write something wrong and I, the thing is not written and I get back a return, uh, 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 an error message. I'm learning that I'm trying to write a machine uh, that is right failed. We'll see in a minute why I need this control because it's, it's going to be uh, subtle how I'm going to control what I'm writing to. Um, and um, and, uh, and uh, that's it, I think. Yeah, and there's one more thing that happens. So one more uh, important thing, it's kind of a subtlety, but it's important. Uh, what information is being written on the tape of the machine that I'm running to? Okay, so it gets the message, and it, it is going to get my, my identity as the writer. The question is, is it going to get my code or not? Does it know the real code of the, of the machine that wrote to it? Uh, uh, that's something that I control with my uh, reveal bit. If I, my reveal bit is one, then that machine gets my code and it knows that it actually gets the true code, otherwise it doesn't get the code, okay? Uh, so that's, I, I control what kind of, uh, uh, if I tell it or not. And, and that's it, okay? So we'll have to see why you need all these uh, uh, little uh, gadgets, but uh, 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 this is essentially what is going on. Okay, so I just described the, the, the model. That's how computation works. Okay. Um, so, so wh wh why, so, so what's, what's going on? So, so first, uh, um, notice the number of, uh, of, of uh, machine instances uh, uh, that's happening in the model, it's unbounded, right? So it can grow and grow because it gets generated, right? And the, 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 the programs, the codes are dynamic, right? They generate the things, it's not fixed in advance. In fact, the beginning is just one machine and then it kind of goes on from there. Um, and, uh, and, but then we, the, we see that uh, the, the way uh, the addressing works is that the identity of each machine is unique in the system. You cannot have two machines with the same identity because if there exists one, you write to it. Uh, and then another thing that uh, is, is important here is that you need to know the identity of a machine in order to write to it, right? So you need to know where, where you're writing, okay? Um, and, um, and, and, and the other thing is that m machines know their, their, their IDs, their own IDs. Um, and, uh, and, and then as we see that the scheduling is completely kind of looks uh, uh, completely where this comes from, but it's, it's completely sequential Right, one machine after the other. There's no concurrency, uh, uh, and there is no uh, uh, there is no fairness, and uh, uh, right, you just decide by the guard that there's somehow this thread, okay. Uh, but still, uh, I argue this is enough in order to capture everything that we want, okay. Um, so, 
and but there are several things here that are happening that are different than at least all the, the, the frameworks that I know. Um, so first, the fact that the number of machines grows and the fact that the code is generated. Uh, um, I don't, th I don't think I don't know of other places that model it this way. Uh, the actually actually paying for work in complexity in order to write to somebody. And it's not that you have like dedicated channels to people and you just write to them. Uh, uh, you have to actually find out who to write to and actually pay the work of writing the identity and the code and whatever to, to, write, to write to a person. Um, and, um, and again, you have the ability to either uh, reveal yourself or not, I mean, to, to, so the recipient knows or not where uh, it's, uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, who is writing to it. And it's actually important, in some places it's important to actually uh, verify that you know, to model cases where you know it's actually important for security, for, uh, for everything, because you know who wrote to you. Uh, and sometimes you, you want to model the fact that you don't know who wrote to you. Uh, so it, you need actually to, to capture all the things. And also in the same cases, sometimes you write to somebody over the net and you don't know who you write to. And sometimes you, you actually want to guarantee that you're writing to some particular person. Uh, and uh, and, and this, is, this is important. Um, but anyway, so this, is, uh, uh, so, this, so, so, so this is the model. It allows you to express things, but it's not fair. Um, so in terms of fairness, we'll talk about, uh, we'll see how we actually we can capture fairness. Uh, the one thing that, uh, um, it's kind of like maybe philosophical divide, you know, whether the fact that it's completely sequential, uh, uh, does it uh, uh, get in the way of modeling concurrency? Uh, and um, so I don't know, it's actually, I, I, I haven't seen uh, any, a proof and it's not really hard to model this question, but, but I argue that not. I argue that if you want to actually model concurrency, uh, uh, you can still model it in this sequential way by just breaking down computations to very small chunks and actually passing control from between machines after a very small chunk. So it doesn't really matter for, for a machine, uh, uh, right? If you think about the execution, if things really happen concurrently or if they uh, happen sequentially but uh, with very, very small chunks. So in terms of uh, what you can get, uh, I, I argue it's the same. Um, and uh, the, uh, the one thing that is uh, actually nice about the sequential uh, way of doing things is that you don't uh, get into issues of, uh, um, of um, uh, non-deterministic scheduling. It has, happens in many systems and many modeling. You actually try, you need to talk about some scheduler that model events in some order and you don't know which order, so you say it can be any arbitrary order. And once you do that, then you get into issues because definitely if you want to do things which are uh, uh, only secure against uh, competentially bounded adversaries, then the fact that there's already a scheduler there that is unbounded could do anything can actually make things completely uh, unwieldy and you cannot model things. Uh, so the fact that you don't need to do that is actually uh, good. Makes life much simpler for, for analysis and for thinking about it. Um, Anyway, so that's uh, 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 so that's that. 